talk to you all about how to be the best support system for survivors. So we mentioned earlier that one in four women and one in six men will become victims of sexual assault in their lifetime. So the chances of y'all knowing someone that identifies as a survivor is really likely. And we want to be able to give you the tools to be that best support system for survivors in your life. Hence why we call it best support. So let's look into what BEST actually stands for. The B stands for Believe Them, E stands for Empower Them, S stands for Support Them, and T stands for Tell Someone How You Feel. And we're gonna dive into what all four of these pieces are a lot more so everyone here can be that best support system for survivors in your life. So B, Believe Them. This just means if someone is coming to you and confiding in you about their unfortunate experience with sexual assault, that you believe what they're telling you is true. We know from FBI statistics that less than 2% of reported sexual assaults are false or made up. So the chances of this person confiding in you about their experience and they're lying about it is really unlikely. So it's really important that you validate what they're saying and believe what they're saying is true. In my personal experience, when I told my best friend what happened to me for the first time, it was the scariest moment of my life. I kid you not. I honestly thought I was going to be blamed for what happened and that I wasn't going to be believed. But when my best friend just said, Carissa, I am so sorry that happened to you and it wasn't your fault, those two sentences, they sound so simple, but they were tremendous for me to hear and I felt extremely validated and I knew I had someone in my corner. And next is E, empower them. And what this can look like is giving that person resources to choose from. Even very little decisions can make a very big difference. So for example, thank you so much for telling me. Before we continue, would you like the blinds open? Would you like the blinds closed? And now it seemed like a silly little decision, but what all of those little decisions do is they give some power back to that survivor. And also later on in this presentation, you will all receive the victim's assistance team number, and that phone number is a very, very great resource to have. And if someone just you know, told you about their experience, you can say, hey, thank you so much for telling me. Um, I have the victim's assistance team number. Would you like me to call you an advocate? Or if you're feeling comfortable, like please, here's the number. Call yourself an advocate. So S, support them. This just means that you remain a safe and affirming person that the survivor can come to whenever they feel the need. It's never saying things like, come on, move on. The sexual assault happened like six months ago. Why are you still dwelling on it? So never saying anything like that because that's not things survivors want to hear. We all know from our own personal experiences with traumatic situations that we all take different amounts of time to heal. And the same thing goes with survivors of sexual assault. And so there's no cookie cutter, every survivor is going to reach this point three months down the road. It doesn't work like that. Every survivor takes different amounts of times to heal, they need different resources, and they need different types and levels of support. So just saying, I'm here for you whenever you need me, and then following through with that in the weeks and months to come, and just remaining that solid support system that a survivor can turn to whenever they need. And finally, T, tell someone how you feel. Now this doesn't mean to go around and talk to other people about what you just heard, but we do think it is very important that you talk with someone else about how you're feeling. What this can do is allow you to better take care of yourself and it also allows you to remain a better support over time. And also having heard that can be really tough to hear. And so if you've been having trouble focusing in class or having trouble concentrating, it might be a very good idea for you to call yourself an advocate. So to sum up one more time, the best support system for survivors, the B stands for believe them, E stands for empower them, S stands for support them, and T stands for tell someone how you feel. And then we have a couple more terms that we'd like to go over, and that's primary and secondary survivor. And so a primary survivor is someone that is directly affected by a sexual assault. And a secondary survivor is someone that is indirectly affected by that sexual assault. 
And a secondary survivor has some sort of relationship to that primary survivor, whatever that relationship might look like, whether it's family members, friends, teachers, mentors, what have you. Um, and so, for example, if my brother came up and told me that he was sexually assaulted, my brother would be the primary survivor, and I would then become a secondary survivor. So we're going to have Marie and Cole come back up here, talk about confidentiality, talk about mandated reporters on campus, and then also some confidential resources we have here at CSU. All right. Uh, it's been really great. We've got a few more minutes for you all. Uh, I really love everyone's energy and your attention. Uh, you've been a freaking awesome crowd. Um, so, uh, really quick, confidentiality. Uh, what is a confidential resource? Uh, CSU has a ton of resources available, and that can include faculty members. Um, but some of these resources are mandated reporters. And mandated reporters are people that are required by law to pass, uh, to report an incident of sexual assault if you are to disclose that to them. So, uh, that includes people like your orientation leaders, RAs, mentors, or staff and faculty. And they all want to be there for you, they all want to help you, uh, but they are legally required to report if you disclose an incident to them. So, we have some confidential resources that you can go to, which is a place that if you disclose an incident, that's going to remain just between you and that resource. And some of those confidential resources that we have here on campus are the CSU Health Network, both the counseling and medical side, and Victims Advocates. And Victims Advocates are out of the WGAC, the Women and Gender Advocacy Center, the same office that we're up here representing tonight. It's a great resource here on campus because not only does it allow you to kind of sit down with somebody and process your experience, it also allows you to have all of the resources at your fingertips so that you can choose the way that you want to move forward. And the last confidential resource we have here on campus is VACT, which is the Victims Assistance Team. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but it's a 24-hour crisis hotline for primary and secondary survivors, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So now we want to have everyone come back up on stage, and we want to talk to everyone about how you can get involved here on campus. So the first thing you can do is enroll in Women's Studies 397, which is Intro to Gender-Based Violence in a U.S. Context. The course is awesome. We've all taken it, I just took it last semester, and it's really cool because you get to have conversations about these issues on a daily basis and dig deeper. And for me, it really sparked a passion for me to want to pursue activism in my local community and also on campus. And all of you can take it as a free elective, so we definitely recommend it. And so when I was passionate about wanting to pursue activism, that's what led me to the Red Whistle Brigade, which we're all here representing. Cole mentioned earlier that we're peer educators on campus, and we host tons of educational programming on gender issues, healthy sex education, healthy relationships, and we do it in really fun ways. Whether it's facilitations like this with funny skits or a flash mob out on the plaza. Whatever we're doing, we're trying to bring awareness to these issues, and we're trying to get people on campus involved and aware of what's going on. So uh, if that's not incentive enough, we also get paid to do what we're doing, and we get paid really well. So right now, we're getting paid to talk to all of you. And I do speak for all of us when I say we would do this even if we weren't getting paid, but as you will soon learn as a college student, it is never a bad thing to have extra cash in your pocket. So if you're interested in the Red Whistle Brigade or the course, feel free and come up and talk to us after the presentation. And the next thing that everyone should get involved in here on campus is CTMO. And CTMO is the Consent Turns Me On campaign. Why? Because consent does turn us on. <laughs> and CTMO is a year-long campaign, but it culminates in April because it's Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So we'll be on the plaza giving away free t-shirts. So everyone should definitely come check us out. Uh, another way to get involved is a group called Men in the Movement. Uh, it's a group geared towards male-identified students. And we get to have really great conversations about these issues. And we talk about what is our role as men in being allies and towards ending sexual violence. So we get to have really great weekly discussions. And there's also open monthly sessions for people of all identities. Uh, so it's a really great place. Uh, if you want to get more information about that, both Cody and myself are members. Um, so feel free to come up and talk to us after the presentation. 
And the next thing we want to encourage is for everyone to stop by the Women and Gender Advocacy Center. We would love to interact with everyone. If you just want to come and talk about more of these issues, if you want to talk about how to get involved, whatever you want to come and talk to us about, we'd love for you to come and see us. And I really want to stress that just because it's the Women and Gender Advocacy Center, it doesn't mean that we're only open for women-identified individuals. We love all identities, and we want to interact with every single one of you. So please feel free to stop by. We're located right next to the Financial Aid Building. And yeah, we'd love to see you. And finally, we have the Victims Assistance Team. And now you all have heard us mention it a couple of times, so I'm just going to go into it a little bit deeper. So just to reiterate, the Victims Assistance Team is a 24-7 weekdays weekends, holidays hotline designed to support both primary and secondary survivors of sexual assault. And this hotline is staffed by certified victims advocates and it is a completely confidential resource if that's what you're looking for. I myself was trained as a victims advocate a couple of years ago now and it's probably the best thing that I've done here at CSU. It's given me a lot of purpose, it's been a really great way to be involved and uh, it allows me to work one-on-one -on -one with both primary and secondary survivors. And so if that's something that sounds interesting to you all, please come up and talk to me afterwards, because it's a really great way to get involved. And now if you will all please get out your cell phones. Please get them out. That, hot, that number is on the slide, but I'm just going to say it out loud a couple of times. That way you all can hear it. And so that phone number is 970-492-4242. And once again, that number is 970-492-4242. And I know you all may be thinking, I don't need this number but there's nothing more satisfying than someone coming and confiding in you and you having a resource to give to them to empower them in their experience with sexual assault. So if you didn't get the chance to get the number now, please come up afterwards and we can give it to you then. It's a great resource to have. So. All right, well that's all we have for you. Thank you so much for staying engaged with us. And right now you're gonna get up and go meet with your orientation leaders and talk about what happened. So please ask for consent from here on out. Songs about sex. Sex? Yeah. Nah, 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 come on. Nah, 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 come on. Come on. Baby, let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. 